Hi everybody, welcome back to Critical Mass. Well, we just did a, a classic sort of movie review on The Manchurian Candidate. Well, well with, it was kind of retro. I don't want to call it a classic. Well, it's an older movie. Okay. An older movie. Uh, didn't come out recently with Denzel Washington. But that was not the original movie out there. So some of our viewers said, hey, you guys should watch the original and compare the two. So that's what we did. And, uh... We'll tell you about it <laughs> right after this. You got Paul's phone book to sit on? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to move up closer to the desk so you look taller? <laughs> you always look like a shrimp in the back there. Because I'm always in the middle. Okay. All right, Paul, well, why don't you set up the movie for us? Okay, so the, this original Manchurian Candidate is a little different from the one we saw with Denzel Washington. This one you have a, a platoon or a squad that's fighting in the Korean War and they're uh, kidnapped by Russian agents with the help of some uh, treacherous uh, Korean uh, folk who backstabbed the Americans. And uh, they're taken, they are, we find out, brainwashed. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is to uh, alter the outcome of an American election later on. Okay. Right. And there are some differences from the original to the new movie. Right. Yeah. Now, you've got to remember, this one was done quite a bit long, much longer. Well, like 1962. Uh, you know? Yeah. Still, hey. still <laughs> black and white, right? With Frank Sinatra and Angela Lansbury in the, the main roles. And so they basically, things back then, obviously, you don't have the special effects and the things that we had when Denzel's movie came out. Like when they're driving in a plane or in a car, you can tell there's screens going yeah. by on the outside. So they, you have to work with what they've got. I'll, I'll say this, though. I really enjoyed, I, I kind of enjoyed watching the original version more than I enjoyed watching the Denzel version. I was going to say the exact same thing. And that's really not like me. Like, I'm not crazy about black and white. I'm not crazy about, like, the older effects and everything. But the story itself was a lot more enjoyable to watch. Uh, the, the Denzel version really, really lagged for me. And I, I found that the, the older version didn't lag as much for me. I have mixed feelings. Like, I, I, I enjoyed the story of the original. I think I really preferred Denzel's version because even though we kind of felt that it, it was kind of slow and predictable, I found uh, the original really dragged for me. Really? It was like I had to watch it in three sittings. <laughs> oh, okay. Good. I One thing I did note, like, the resolutions to the same story were different. Yes. From the first one to the last one. Obviously, Denzel's version, they, they kind of flipped the script on it just so you couldn't say you it. didn't know what was going on if you, if you saw the first one. Right? However, so, a few differences. I preferred the resolution of the first one. Uh, yeah, me too. It, it gave more, more emphasis and more psychological torment to the, the main soldier who was mm -hmm. going through this. And the resolution then. You know, it, 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 although Angela Lansbury in this is manipulating all the way through, just like in Denzel's movie, except in this one, we see it. It's not behind the scenes. In Denzel's one, you know, she's a congresswoman, but she's kind of behind the scenes. In this one, she's running everything, including her husband, who is the main politician. She's telling him to shut up and do what we say because you're an idiot. And he, every time he tries to bring something up, she just shoots him down. Now, there were a couple of elements uh, from the original that I thought they did better in the, uh, in the Denzel's version, uh, such as um, posting him. So, so it, they, they take him and they put him in the position of a reporter in the original. So he's a, a, a reporter's assistant. Uh, instead of somebody who's actually in political office, right? So uh, vying for vice uh, presidency. Um, and so I found, okay, well, 
if you want to insert somebody into a position of power, maybe a reporter's assistant is not your best bet. Uh, yeah, like he didn't seem to have any kind of uh, notable purpose to be there. Yeah. Like you could have done that to anybody. It didn't have to be him. Right? right now we find out later on that Angela Lansbury is very angry that they chose him but I, I think if he were running for vice president or whatever it adds more uh, at stake mm -hmm. more stakes to it and I didn't like how Frank Sinatra's character seemed to be free and clear of the brainwashing like 30% away through the movie right and after that he's just a cop trying to investigate you know it's yeah. eh. I don't know. Okay. I did, however, like the way they portrayed the brainwashing, where when they're, they they take one cut scene and they they see you know yes ma'am no ma'am and they see the lady talking, but it's actually the Korean guy who's brainwashing them and they'll they'll they show the cut scenes and flipping back and forth and I really enjoyed that. And even the people he sees are different from time to time. Yeah. One time it's all these old white ladies, like a, an old church service, and then there's the, there's some, some colored ladies in the next one. Like, it's always mixed. It's back and forth. And what I liked about it is when they say, you go do this, and he wants, yes ma'am, and he goes up, the other soldiers who say, hey, what are you doing? Hey, you calm down now. Yes ma'am. Like, they're under control too, and they show that. Where in the Denzel version, they just walk over to him and, the, uh, you know, the person yeah. starts getting hurt. And there doesn't seem to be any re reaction. They're, they're basically getting rid of them because they're not under brainwash as much as everybody else. And they're in a wheelchair and they're all... This, this one looked like these guys are all just sitting in on this church service or this committee meeting and they don't want to be there. They're talking about quilts or something. Right, and yeah, quilts. You know, or or, or uh, gardening, and yeah. and, you know. And so I liked that part of it. It seemed, for back then, think of when this was made, that's pretty deep stuff that they were having. Mm -hmm. You know, treason and then all this kind of stuff. So I, I, I did enjoy it and you can't say one or the other because you have Frank Sinatra and Angela Lansbury and then you have Denzel Washington and um, Meryl, Meryl Streep. Street. Great actors and actresses, both. Yeah. I, I actually, I found, yeah. uh, I found the lead character, I mean, it, I know it was one they, of black they, and white was color, but they, they look the, exactly like the same, the same yeah. like could have been father and son, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's how they look. Yeah. Did you notice, even in the Angela Lansbury scene, she kissed him. Yes. She kissed her yeah. son romantically. Yes. Which... I don't get it. <laughs> Why did they that, have it? That could have been removed from the movie completely, and it wouldn't have changed the movie. But did it fit even in the original? No, it didn't. It didn't. I don't know. Well, either way, actually, for you know, a lot of these times people say, hey, you should look at the original. You check out. And I am very disappointed with the original compared to the remake a lot of times. Or I much prefer the original than the remake, like our um, Total Recall ones, yeah. right? Which is so strange that that's the way it is, honestly, because usually you watch the original and you're very disappointed with the sequels yeah. or the or the reboots, um, unless you're taking it like War of the Worlds and that sort of thing, and you're looking at it and you're going way back into when it was black and white, that sort of thing, and then you're like, well, okay. So well, it, a the lot new of it, one is a lot of it is nostalgia because uh, all the young kids who saw the Star Wars prequels, they like them, and everybody who grew up with the original trilogy, they're saying, oh, well, that was a step backward. Yeah. But uh, I, while, while the first uh, one we watched, uh, the Denzel one, was based on quasi-corporate government conspiracy, I really like the McCarthyism angle where it's, uh, you, know, a, you know, you're a communist and you're a communist, and, because this actually happened, right? Yeah. And it, uh, it, it was awesome to see the Red Scare era in a movie. Yeah, the Cold War era and all this, right. and the thought processing that's going behind Instead it. Instead of just a fictional makeup thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, definitely there's, uh, there's elements of, of both of these versions that I really liked. Um, I, I almost wish they would have kept a lot of the remake, of the reboot, closer to the original. 
Uh, but at the same time, I, I, I did like some of the changes they made as far as, you know, putting putting the main character into a position of power and that sort of thing, right? So, the yeah. uh, This came out in uh, 62. It ran uh, until 64. And then Frank Sinatra bought the rights to it. And he kept it hidden. He didn't want it out there. Uh, apparently he thought it was too disturbing with the assassination of President Kennedy and it was only in 1988 or something like that that it was released again. Is that right? Yeah. Mm. That was pretty neat. That's good trivia. There you go. Um, now, we, now we know. The more yeah. you know, kids, the more you know. So, uh, in this movie, you can see how it's dated, right? Yeah. So you have uh, a lot of racial uh, derogatory comments, mm -hmm. you know, Angela Lansbury calls the uh, uh, Asian men Ching Chong Chang or something yeah. like that. Uh, you have uh, Shaw saying, make like a nice little housekeeper or something like that and mm -hmm. pats his wife for on the, on the behind. Yeah, things, yeah. You, things you could not see in a movie now. Things that are back from that time and that's how things work. Now given that Gone with the Wind has been removed from HBO Max, are other movies like this going to be removed? Most I, likely. I hope not. I really don't. But yes. The answer is yes. Like we saw in the comments when we did the, the Denzel version, everybody said, you have to watch this. It yeah. is a loved movie. But it has the things that people will cancel it for. Yep. You know? That's the cancel culture we're in. Yeah, unfortunately, because if you start looking for things to cancel, everything's going to be cancelled. Absolutely everything. You're going to have to get rid of the honeymooners. You're going to have to get rid of every single Archie thing Bunker. out there. Could you imagine making Archie Bunker today? Yeah, you could. But you know what? A lot of people always point to the racism that Archie Bunker had, but there was always the opposite side. Yeah, it was a very neutral show. Yeah, and they actually... And proved, hilarious. And they proved him wrong many times in the show, right? It's true, yeah. His, his bigotry and everything yeah. is it's part of the plot point. Yeah, he changes during the show. So, uh, entertainment is entertainment. The past is the past as far as movies and shows and everything is concerned, and they should leave it alone. There's so much other stuff that needs to be fixed well before an old movie from 1962 needs to be cancelled. Yeah. As I was watching it, I noted things that would be considered problematic today. And that's that's the progress. But yeah, we see how things were in the past and uh, yeah, great, so this is a learning issue. So now you take that out and there is no chance to see the difference. There is no chance to see all the improvements we made. So yeah, cancel culture is just cancel culture for the sake of being cancel culture. And I will, Books should never be burned, books should never be stopped, movies should never be cancelled, things like that, because we live in a free society and everyone's... We, history is history. Now, in context, uh, I know everybody loved this movie. Uh, it had uh, very historical, you know, relationships to what was going on politically at the time. But would you call this a cinematic classic? I wouldn't call it a cinematic classic, but I would call it a writing classic for taking on the subject matter back then. It was pretty, it was I, a pretty daring topic to cover back I, then. I think it sh I, don't, I don't think it is, but I think it should be. I think this movie should be more widely viewed. See? And maybe if Sinatra hadn't bought all the rights to it. It might have been. And, and kept, it, kept it away from everybody, maybe it would have been. See, I enjoyed the story. Uh, but I wasn't enthralled with the movie. Yeah, like, it, like when you think classic, like if Wizard of Oz or something, and you see something groundbreaking, like the colorization is coming out and the, things like that, this was a story, a basic story. So it, it, it didn't have any of the wow factor that you need for a classic movie. Now, one question I did find myself asking myself is, would I have enjoyed it as much as I did had I not seen the 2004 version, mm -hmm. right? So I think a lot watching of... watching the 2004 version, sort of, it, it's like reading the book before watching the movie. You know what I mean? It was could, because I could draw parallels. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and did you notice how much the the Queen of Diamonds on the cards looks like Angela Lansbury? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice that. <laughs> now that you uh, mention it, yeah. Well, there you go. We actually kind of thought the movie was not bad. 
considering how old the movie is, and there's been remakes since. Story was really good. Different way that they... I actually preferred the way they portrayed the sto the soldiers and the you know brainwashing than they did in, in Denzel's case. I didn't like that little flashback stuff. I like seeing the two... This is what the soldiers are seeing and this is what's really being done. And they, and they didn't even try to make it a mystery or no. unravel things. It no. was just step by step. And you knew what was going on right from the moment of seeing it. Yeah. Like and that. while Denzel's one was, they're trying to make it a mystery, and it wasn't. Because as soon as you see the first clip, you know the whole story. Exactly. So even though they tried to keep it a secret, it didn't. And this one, just I thought it did it better. Some of the other stuff, not as well, but I, I much preferred the way they handled the soldiers. Why don't you guys check it out? If you have seen the movies, let us know what you guys think down below. If you've seen both of them, which one did you prefer? Or are you like us, kind of? I liked a little of this one, and I liked a little of this one. Mm. All right. Well, until next time, why don't you guys check out some of our other content down below? And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the channel.